James Kaufman, World News Report today, September 4th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. NOAA has come out and said that we've been hit with an unexpected coronal mass ejection. I don't think that it's unexpected for us guys, is it? Or the ESA. It's just a little bit late. A coronal mass ejection hit Earth's magnetic field today, September 4th at 10.30 UTC time. The unexpected impact jolted the USGS magnetometers in Boulder, Colorado. A fairly stout blow. G1 to G2 geomagnetic storm watches are in effect as a result of the coronal mass ejection's impact. Taking a look at our KP indexes, we are not seeing much on them. The Boulder KP index does indicate a geomagnetic storm for three hours, as well as the Fredericksburg. They both also indicate geomagnetic disturbances for three hours before that storm and for three hours after that geomagnetic storm. Our estimated planetary KP index only picked up a geomagnetic disturbance, which is strange after you see how strong the plasma actually is compared to some of these other days when the plasma was just barely over space weather threshold and we saw large geomagnetic storms. Now, as y'all would recall, we had this M. 5.57 solar flare on the first it was mostly eclipsed by the incoming limb of our star and noah did suggest that it was a much larger solar flare and that we were only seeing a portion of it on our ghost x-ray flux here i believe it came in again as a 5.57 solar flare whereas noah said it was definitely an x flare now, it also created a halo CME, and I said that I believe that it would impact Earth. Well, I believe it just has impacted Earth, as I will show you guys. Now, taking a look at LASCO, C3, here is that flare. The solar flare, again, which was called an M5.57, and Noah said was definitely an X flare, was eclipsed by the incoming limb of our star. And we see plasma going away from our star in every direction, i.e. a halo eruption. Now, at the time of this solar flare and associated coronal mass ejection, since the plasma went in all different directions, I did say that this halo eruption would affect Earth. Headed over to our Discover real-time solar wind satellite, we can see the impact here. We had plasma go down from about one centimeter cubed all the way up to 2665, 22, 2684. So the space weather threshold is 10 centimeters cubed. And these are some decent spikes here. There's a 27 in there. And actually the plasma has been tapering off. So I had solar winds go from 321, and we had one hit here at 464, another one here at 463. So we really had an uptick with solar winds there. If you will recall, the ESA, the European Space Agency, actually predicted this exact impact. They just had it hitting yesterday, as I thought it may as well. Of course, both NOAA and NASA completely blew this call, as we will see. Again, the ESA and myself both thought this would impact yesterday, but these are right at the numbers we were looking for with that impact. Here is NOAA and NASA getting it completely wrong here. This is the actual explosion and coronal mass ejection that uh, is causing this impact it happened on September 1st. They said that it was extremely strong, but it would not affect Earth. Wrong. Let's look at their actual Space Weather Prediction Center. 
I would say it's funny, but it's really not that funny because Noah and NASA never get a prediction correct. And we fund them with hundreds of billions of dollars every year. Here we go. Today is the fourth. They have plasma at two, starting the day, ending the day at two. Remember, we went up to 27. Now, they are up at about 600 with solar winds and have been since yesterday. We haven't cleared 460. I don't know what event they have here. They must see a coronal hole that is not visible on the face of the sun. But they have several days of solar winds at 600 kilometers per second. That I can't explain. No plasma impact whatsoever. Now, with that said, we're in a polar cap absorption event here on Earth. We have radiation pouring in the poles. And I'm sure that this impact was not good for us. Uh, this radiation and this polar cap absorption event actually started the same exact time and hour that that flare went off i.e. the 5.57 that was partially eclipsed by the incoming part of our solar disk that Noah said was probably a larger X flare. Again, we've been in this polar cap absorption event ever since that flare erupted, and this will be ongoing, it appears. Unbelievable. Everyone's definitely getting their dose of radiation for the day, an unexpected coronal mass ejection impact. Even though we knew protons were pouring in our North and South Pole from that event. We'll take a look at that right now as well. All right over to our GOES proton flux five minute data. We can see that on the first when we had that solar flare and associated coronal mass ejection, we started a proton storm of sorts we never really broke the space where the threshold but what you see uh, on the d region absorption prediction map are protons pouring in our poles which means the flare definitely went this direction we knew that from the get-go it's hard for me to understand why nasa and noah said that this would not affect Earth when it really already has been affecting Earth for the past three days, as you can see here. Now, we had an enforcement flare here yesterday. They said that that was completely on the backside, but somehow that actually pushed the proton count even higher. Very strange indeed. With that said, we were just hit with a coronal mass ejection that was unexpected by NOAA and NASA, expected by me and the ESA, just we expected it late yesterday. God bless you and yours, folks. Please share our video. Please subscribe. And always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.